welcome welcome back all of you to antibiotic video series here in part 27 of this video series we discuss cholestin and polymyxin b so far we discussed antibiotics which act on cell wall synthesis then we saw antibiotics which interfere with the protein synthesis process and here we start with antibiotics which act on cell membrane of this bacteria so we are talking about antimicrobial peptides which act on cell membrane the antimicrobial peptides we cover are polymyxins and cholestin which acts on gram negative organisms in this video and then daptomycin which act on gram positive organisms then gramicidins different types gramicidin s then tyrosidin tyrothresin etc and we already covered this bacitracin like drugs earlier most importantly one thing it should be clear that we are not talking here about antiseptics or disinfectants which also are acting on the cell membrane so except this antiseptics we are talking only about antimicrobial peptides which acts as antibiotics a cellular membrane is most essential for a living being which is around the organelles of the cell so bacteria is also having a cell membrane in gram positive organisms bacteria the single cell membrane inner to the cell wall made of peptidoglycan so this is the peptidoglycan and this is the cell membrane of gram positive bacteria so this is peptidoglycan and this is the cell membrane while in gram negative organisms there is an inner cell membrane so this is the inner cell membrane and then outer cell membrane so this is an outer membrane so an extra outer cell membrane in gram negative organism and in between this there is a space called as periplasmic space and there is small amount of peptidoglycan so this is the peptidoglycan this is the inner cell membrane and this is the outer extra cell membrane in gram negative bacteria the cell membrane is the boundary defining the self and non-self and this acts as a selective permeability barrier and this control the entry and movement of in and out of the cell and the cell membrane houses the protein receptors for extracellular materials then the most important function of cell membrane is to maintain a concentration gradient and this concentration gradient acts as a source of energy so this concentration gradient is called as the proton gradient this proton motif force drives the synthesis of ATP so for ATP synthesis proton motive force should be there so if H plus or proton enter into the cell so if H plus enter into the cells it facilitates the synthesis of ATP so if proton gradient is disturbed or if the cell if distorts the cell membrane the proton gradient will be disturbed and the ATP synthesis will be stopped and the bacteria will eventually die off so it produces a bactericidal effect now let's see something more about this is cell membrane first about the composition of cell membrane cell membrane is a lipid bilayer phospholipid bilayer so it also has some glycoproteins are also the additionally then phospholipid means two fatty acids so this is the two fatty acids which are attached to the connected to the glycerol the hydroxyl groups of the glycerol and one phosphate group the third group is the phosphate connected to the hydroxyl the fatty acids so these are the fatty acids or so this one fatty acids are hydrophobic ends and are can be saturated or unsaturated so it can be unsaturated the unsaturated cis types are loosely packed one and helps in the fluidity of the membrane so unsaturated one helps in the fluidity of the membrane because bacteria needs to adjust to the surrounding temperature in response to the change in surrounding temperature this bacteria has to adjust the fluidity of the cell membrane this is done by increasing and decreasing the amount of unsaturated fatty acids there is no cholesterol in mammals or other there are cholesterol in there is no cholesterol in bacterial cell membrane like in humans and in fungus there is ergosterols are present so in fungus there is sterols are present but in bacteria this is not present this has to adjust the fluidity by altering the sun saturated fatty acid level so this fatty acid containing area is hydrophobic area while the phosphate containing area here outside and this side inside so these are hydrophilic area so upper and lower sides are hydrophilic and middle side is hydrophobic and this area is hydrophobic while this phosphate we know it is negatively charged so these are polar areas so by adding some serine choline ethanolamine etc this charge can be adjusted by this bacteria there is dilution of charges so in bacteria there is a hydrophobic middle core and an outer and inner negatively charged or polar area which is present 
surrounded the cell membrane. In gram-negative bacteria, outer cell membrane has lipopolysaccharides, so LPS or these endotoxins, and these proteins can stabilize the membrane. So this can also impart some additional charges to the outside of cell membrane. And already cell membrane has negative charge because of the phosphate present, and now additionally it contains anionic lipopolysaccharides. So outside the cell become now additionally negatively charged. So if some chemical our charged species can bind to the cell membrane or LPS and it can bind to the nonpolar region or other region by the nonpolar end. The such substances can cause destabilization of the cell membrane. So this can destroy the cell membrane. So we are talking about detergents, cationic detergents with the structure which can destabilize the cell membrane and form pores of the pores to the cell membrane of the bacterial cell. So this causes depolarization and destroys the proton gradient. So, synthesis of ATP will be inhibited and this causes bactericidal effect. The drugs like polymyxins which are cationic antimicrobial peptides. So, these are cationic peptides means these have positive charges. So, this causes selectively binding at the charged polar surface of the bacterial cell membrane. The bacterial cell membrane we already said it is negatively charged because of this phosphate and additionally because of this LPS. So, this leads to the binding of these drugs leads to perturbation of membrane structure and the cell membrane pores will develop and finally it causes death of the bacteria. Now to the drug polymyxins. Polymyxins are peptides. It's a cationic cyclic lipopeptide. Cationic because of its positive charges, cyclic because of its cyclic ring structure and lipo because of its lipid moiety presence. And discovered in 1947 and in use since 1949 by the late 1970s there was almost declined the use because of its neurotoxicity and nephrotoxic potential and only used in external formulations. The multidrug resistance and lack of antimicrobials revised the interest in this group. Chemically these drugs are heptapeptides so linked to a tripeptide side chain. So this is a heptapeptide and linked to a tripeptide side chain which is linked to an acyl group of something about 7 to 8 carbons carbon chain and most notable feature of this drug is that peptide is having an unusual structure the presence of dextro amino acid so there is a dextro amino acid D phenyl alanine is there and usually amino acids are liver forms another feature is that unusual amino acid there is an DAB that is diaminobutyric acid so diaminobutyric acid diaminobutyric acid diaminobutyric acid diaminobutyric acid so we know that these amino groups are cationic so multiple cationic compounds so it has a positive charge so diamino means multiple cationic compound so this helps to avoid from protease enzymes also so long hydrophobic tail multiple positively charge at the head is a classic cationic detergent structure. So cationic detergents have cationic head and a long tail. There are five different types of polymyxins. Polymyxin A, polymyxin B, polymyxin C up to E, polymyxin A to E are there. Polymyxin B is an important one and polymyxin E is cholestic. So polymyxin E is otherwise called as cholestic. And polymyxin B is obtained from Bacillus polymyxa and subspecies cholestinus. And the difference between polymyxin B and cholestin is that the sixth amino acid here is in polymyxin B it is D phenyl alanine while it is D leucine in cholestin. So in cholestin it is D leucine while this is D phenyl alanine in polymyxin B. So this structure is polymyxin B. So now coming to the mechanism of action this acts as cationic detergent the drug is amphiphilic or amphipathic. So these drugs act specifically at gram negative bacteria. So the positively charged DAB DAB groups will bind with the negatively charged LPS groups. So usually the negative phosphate is bind to magnesium or calcium and the polymyxin will replace this divalent cations and binds with the LPS end. Now the fatty acid chain, the fatty acyl chain is inserted into the hydrophobic area of the bacterial cell membrane and this destabilizes the outside membrane. Then they cross the membrane and reaches the inner membrane and this destabilizes the inner membrane and causes leakage of cell membrane. Thus the bacterial cell membrane losses the proton gradient and leads to cell lysis and death. 
So this is the mechanism of cholestin and polymyxin. Polymyxin B is used topically. Mixture of polymyxin B1 and B2. 1 milligram is usually 10,000 international units and this act against gram negative organism. And these are bactericidal drug used as polymyxin sulfate. This ophthalmic optic drops and creams and the drug is not absorbed orally. So it has no systemic effect. So it's used only as topical drug. The polymyxin E or cholestin is active against gram negative organisms aerobic that is pseudomonas e coli influenza shigella etc and these are resistant to many of the organisms like clepsila pneumonia acinetobacter proteus serratia fungus etc and also gram negative cocci the drug is not absorbed orally so it is given parenterally used usually used as external drug but nowadays it is used parenterally the parental formulation used is cholestimethate or cms so this is a pro drug hydrolyzed slowly in the bloodstream to release this active drug cholestin sulfate so also it can be used as inhalation by preventing the lung infection so also used as intraventricular or intrathecal uses are also there 1 milligram is 30,000 international units the usual dose is 9 million or 300 milligram as loading dose or 150 milligram depends on the patient condition the drug polymyxin is usually excreted unchanged so dose adjustments are required in case of kidney diseases already we know that this is a nephrotoxic drug the synergism with other antimicrobial agents is an additional advantage so important toxicity is dose related nephrotoxicity is the most important one then it can cause central nervous system toxicity like paresthesia or tigo sludge speech ataxia cns toxicity etc then muscle weakness and lingual paraphasia etc then local injection site problems is important then skin related issues hepatotoxicity neutropenia are some additional or other adverse reactions of the drug intravenously the drug is used for very serious infections and not responding to other therapy like bacteremia burns endocarditis meningitis ventriculitis bone and joint cellulitis cystic fibrosis so for serious infection not responding to other treatment only we use polymyxins like cholestin now finally to the resistance part of polymix since cross resistance is possible between polymyxin B and cholestin. Chances of resistance is because of the modification of LPS lipopolysaccharides. Thus interaction between the cholestin and lipopolysaccharides can be reduced by decreasing the net negative charge of the cell membrane. So that's one way bacteria can counter this antibiotic cholestin. Then secretion of protease which can degrade the drug is another way of producing resistance. So that's all in this video. So in the next video, we will see about daptomycin, which is active against gram-positive organisms, which are also acting on cell membrane. Okay, thank you. Thank you for watching.